Sorry, you look adorable, but you look like trouble. So oh, I'm thank in, you. <laughs> intrigued, intrigued and scared all at once. Today I want to tell you about the single simplest style of game that I've ever seen be dramatically effective and consistent. And the reason this works is it basically solves the biggest issue almost everybody has in game, which is how do you show interest in the girl without giving your power away? And it solves it simply, clearly, and elegantly. If you're a beginner, I would actually recommend this be one of the first styles of game you learn. And even if you're advanced, there are places in your game where doing this will probably enhance what you're doing. So it's incredibly universal, incredibly effective, and it's also simple and straightforward. So let's get into it right now. Now the style of game I'm talking about is something that I call sweetie game because the person I learned it from used to call girls sweetie a lot while doing it. And this is modeled after one of the best naturals I've ever met in my entire life. It was the early 2000s and at this point in game, everybody who I knew who was good at game was doing this very indirect, hands off the merchandise, opinion opener, um, negs, all that kind of a style of game. And we had this very kind of like firm archetype of what we thought worked. And then this guy came in and he was doing it completely differently and getting in some ways better results than us. And so what was he doing? Well, what he was doing was a very, very direct style of game. He was opening girls by calling them they were adorable right away, right? And throughout the interaction, he was escalating a lot. He was calling them sweetie. So it was very much the type of game that, that seems natural and intuitive. You know, you're turned on by a girl, you act like you're turned on by her. Now, the problem for most guys with doing that is that when you do that, you're obvious to the point of being creepy. Right? But what made this work is that while he was being somewhat obvious that he was attracted to the girl, he was not making it obvious that he was bought in or sold on the girl. Right? So in, the, in one sense, emotionally he was attracted to her, but it's like he was logically holding back. Right? Put yourself in this situation. You're talking to a girl in a bar. She clearly is into you. She's even touching you, even making out with you, but she's making it clear she's not going to go home with you. And she's making it clear she has to go home with her friends. She's making it clear that um, you're not her type. She's making it clear that she's not this type of girl. And it's very frustrating, right? Because she obviously likes you, but at the same time, there's all the obstacles and you have to solve all the obstacles and you don't know you can have her. What you're doing when you do Sweetie Game is essentially that. You're taking on that role um, that the girl does when she's being seduced by you, it's almost as though you're being seduced by the girl. So how do you actually execute this style of game? Well, the first thing is the frame, okay? The frame here is that you just love women. You absolutely love women. You're so turned on by women. You're so aroused by women, but you're trying not to be. It's almost as if you were like a recovering sex addict, right? It's like every woman you see, you just, you just oh, you just want her, you gotta have her, but you know you shouldn't. You know you're trying not to, you're stepping away, that's in your past, that's not who you are anymore, etc. right? And so it's kind of weird because in one sense, it's extremely playerish, but in another sense, it's extremely not playerish. It's actually a little bit prudish, right? Um, and it's almost like, the girls in the past got to have you and you gave in to them, but you're trying to resist now. You're a new man. You've, you've, you've recovered, right? So that's a little bit of the frame, right? And so you, you're very unapologetic about the fact that you are attracted to the girl. It's completely fine. In the same way that a recovering alcoholic would, would not lie to you in saying he, he wants a sip of alcohol. He wants it so, so, so badly, but he's resisting harder than anyone's ever resisted. So that's where the tension is coming in. And that's very important, right? Any style of game, you have to have tension. You have to have sexual tension. If you're just too obvious, no tension. If there's no sexual attraction, no tension. Okay, but tension is where arousal comes from. Tension is where attraction comes from, all right? Now, the nature of this game, because you are being unapologetic and unabashed about things, it almost certainly has to be direct, right? Now, you don't want to say something as direct as you're hot or I like your tits or something like that, because that's just an immediate rejection in most cases, right? But something that's a soft direct, such as you're adorable, which was kind of the standard go-to opener of this person who I learned this from, definitely works because adorable is certainly I'm attracted to you. I certainly like you. I certainly am feeling something towards you, but it's not overtly sexual and it's not completely bought in. It's also very slightly sort of mocking condescending, right? Adorable. What do you call adorable? Small children, kittens, things that you don't treat as sexual objects, right? So on the one hand, you clearly are feeling something on the, and you clearly like the girl. You're not hiding that, but there is this barrier to sexual or sexualization. Okay. So that's the first part is that you are being fairly sexual, but you're resisting it. Now, what else happens in this style of game? 
because you are not hiding your emotions, because you're not hiding your arousal, it actually allows you to get very physical. And this is actually why this style of game was so much more effective than what we were doing in the early 2000s. In the early 2000s, we were saying, you know, hands off the merchandise, no, you can't have this, um, you and I are not gonna get along, which built a lot of attraction, but there was this problem. When you're pushing the girl away and saying she can't have you, well, how are you then going to get physical? Sex is a physical act, and so physical escalation was a huge problem. Sweetie Games solved this, right? By being able to say, oh my God, stop being so cute, I just, I can't resist. But at the same time, it's like you're verbally resisting, and you seem to be emotionally resisting, but your hands just seem to find their way onto the girl because you're just so tempted, right? And so it allows for escalation to be very natural. It means escalation is the most natural thing to have happen, right? You're almost trying to resist the escalation, but it's, it's happening as, as a part of it. So it allowed for escalation, it allowed for pulling, it allowed you to make all these logistical and physical and even verbal moves, which lead you in the right direction without resistance, but each step along the way, there is tension. Let me spell it out to you one more way. Oftentimes when I teach game, I say that there are three phases that effective game should go through. It should go through, I'm not sure if I like you or I don't like you yet. You're starting to win me over and then I like you but, okay? Now sweetie game is not quite as robust and complete as that full model, but what you're doing when you do sweetie game, you're skipping to category three. You're opening with, I like you but, and you're using that one frame throughout the entire interaction. Now, if that does work, you don't have to transition to different things. You don't have to um, go from, hey, there's tension, now we're resolving the tension, now we can escalate. You just start escalating from the get-go. And so with this being a direct style of game, you're not gonna be quite as high percentage on the open as you might with some other styles of game. But when you do open, and you're still gonna be decently high percentage, when you open, the transition from um, opening to showing attraction, to qualifying, to escalation, to sex, there's not really a lot of transition. You're pretty much being the same person. You're playing the same character consistently throughout the entire set. You're sort of just opening with, almost opening with a close, but at the same time, you're resisting the close. So what are some of the things that you might hear or see during Sweetie Game? Well, number one, um, just the word Sweetie, right? The reason we called it Sweetie Game was um, that the person who was the, the inspiration for this would be always calling the girl sweetie. He'd almost be acting as if they're already dating, but he's being resentful. Sweetie, stop. I just, I like, stop being so cute. I don't, I'm not ready for that yet. That kind of stuff. Sweetie, oh my goodness, right? That kind of stuff. So it's slightly condescending. It's very personal. It's very intimate, but it's not like, you're not calling her hottie. You're not calling her sexy girl. You're not calling her anything that's, that's an overt come on. It's very endearing. It's very sweet. Um, and actually one thing that he would do as a, um, a physical escalation maneuver that, that I actually don't do much, but I did a lot when I did Pure Sweetie Game, is he did a lot of hand-holding, right? He'd be taking the girl's hands very, very early on the set, treating her and the, him and the girl like they're already a couple um, very, very early on. So this, this vibe of she's your sweetie, she's your girl, you're together, you're a couple, is almost prevalent in the set from the very get-go. Secondly, the word adorable. Over and over again, stop being so adorable. You're so adorable, stop it, right? You, just, you can use cute, adorable, anything like that. All of these words that are clear compliments, they're clear positives, but they're not overtly sexual and they're not risky in a sexual direct, direct way. Another thing you would see a lot in Sweetie Game is you telling the girl to stop doing something good. Stop being so cute. Stop being so sweet. Stop turning me on. Stop impressing me. Why? If you are a recovering sex addict, if you are tremendously interested in sex but trying to resist it, you want the girl to stop tempting you. And what is this gonna make the girl do? Probably it's gonna make her want to tempt you more. It's gonna give her something to try and do to win you even more over or to convince you. One final and kind of surprising element of Sweetie Game is there's a lot of compliments. That part's not surprising, but the compliments are kind of over the top. Like you give someone a compliment they haven't even earned yet or that, that, that maybe they don't even fully deserve. And the funny thing about that is if you give someone a compliment they deserve and they don't correct you, well now they're sort of qualifying themselves to you. They're sort of giving them, they have something to live up to and now they have to kind of walk a tightrope to maintain that status in your eyes. And so by putting them on a pedestal, you're putting them on a pedestal but it's an extremely shaky pedestal that they could fall off any time and that's another builder of the sexual tension, right? So you're, you're being very upfront, you're saying I like you, you're saying I'm aroused by you, but you're trying very hard to resist it and you're saying you're aroused by them for reasons they maybe can't live up to. And so it feels like it could be shaky. 
right? And you can, at some point, like, you can always do withdrawals or pushaways or that kind of stuff. You say, oh, you know what? Oh, never mind. Maybe I was wrong. And then, no, 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 I still love you, right? So you can still have push pulls. You can still have tension. You can still have a lot of these other moves. They're just done in a different way where instead of it being like, I don't like you, now you're winning me over, it's I do like you, don't ruin it, all right? So it's, it's kind of game in reverse. And again, the best way I can explain it is you're kind of starting at the end. You're starting with how you would like to be with the girl in the bedroom, how you would like to be with the girl in a relationship already, and you're kind of just assuming that's the case. You're kind of just generating that through your attitude and your vibe. And if the girl falls into it, you can get very good escalation, tons of intimacy, and it's very, very congruent. So it can be incredibly, incredibly effective. So now having heard this, it might sound almost too good to be true. Like, sweetie game is just everything, right? Just why don't I just do that? Well, it is very, very good, and that's, that's why I'm teaching it, and that's why it's very effective. It's not perfect, right? There are some, some issues with it, right? Number one, it is a very direct style of game, so you'll be getting a few more rejections on the open than you could if you were a little more calibrated or a little more sort of artistic about how to do the open. Number two, it's very hard to do in a group situation. It's more of a one-on-one -on -one style of game. Um, number three, it can get a little bit obvious because you tend to be hitting the same frame over and over again. So it can tend to be a little bit gimmicky. So it's not the be all and all of game. It's not what I'd recommend for like to get you to a world-class level or even a highly, highly advanced level. However, if you are new to game, it is one of the absolute best first things to learn. If you're intermediate and stuck on these, these common sticking points or stuck where you can't get past certain things in the set, absolutely tremendous thing to implement in your game. And if you're advanced but have trouble escalating and trouble with your late game, this may be something to throw into your escalation sequence or your late game to make it tremendously more effective as well.